All right, I'm with a recovering corporate executive, also known as the Sherpa of Happiness. I love that title. This is Valerie Shepard. Hey, Valerie, thanks for being here. Thank you. I'm really grateful. Okay, so I want to talk about this um, road to recovery, if you will. You were a corporate executive, so tell me a little bit about that. Well, I was running a big team, uh, making a lot of money for the company and and doing pretty well for myself, but um, really not very happy very stressful, not really living in alignment with what I think my purpose is here or who I am, and it all came to head one day, (laughs) where in the middle of a meeting, I got symptoms that I thought I might have been having a heart attack. And um, I actually asked one of my staff members, do you know what the symptoms are for a heart attack in a woman? Like I was that present, or not, (laughs) to ask the question. Ended up going to the hospital, and while they're hooking me up with all these uh, machines to check my heart, I really had to ask myself, is this is this really what I'm going to be here for? Like, is this what my life is going to be about, what I am right this moment? And then the question changed from, is this it, to who am I? Like, who am I really, and how am I living up to that? How am I expressing that, and where did all this come from? Like, even in that moment, I knew something was calling me to wake up. Okay, so... You took that initial step. What, what did you do? Did you quit? Did you, I mean, start making plans to what's my next stage in life? Well, out of the question, like I say, you know, you have to do the exploration to find the treasure. So for me, started the exploration of like really who am I? What is, what is me about? Yeah. And what I found was a lot of stuff. So the first thing I did was I was willing to ask myself some deep questions about where things about me came from. I was willing to go into the unhappiness and really decide if the money, the title, the personality, the identity that I'd created to be what I thought was successful was going to be enough for me. And how much longer? I mean, I don't blame my experience on anybody. I I know that it was a divine experience that was to get me to wake up. And I know that I was living out of alignment. And so the first step was that asking myself some questions. The next step was choosing. So I decided to choose me instead of the money or the personalities or the title. I want to be the full expression of Valerie Shepard and um, discovered what that was all about. So I know that I'm here as a messenger now. I, I don't need to do what I used to be doing. I know that I'm here to communicate a message and a vision for unconditional love, which I believe is what I'm here to be. And I wasn't being that, and so my heart was the big loud call telling me that I needed to shift. So talk to me, there's so many people that I would say have that moment, whether it's a little tap on the shoulder or maybe it's a push, maybe you know something like you. Yeah, the smack head. upside the head, said hello, <laughs> <laughs> are you <laughs> listening? But I think what happens is like you, with people who are unhappy in their situation, they don't know what they don't know, and they don't know how to get out of it, so they just keep doing what they're doing. Um, I think it's even challenging for people who do know what to do and yet still not do those things. So how does someone start making that transition where it doesn't feel so overwhelming and that they can start becoming that person that they truly believe that they are? Well, you know what? I say wake up a lot, and I've got to tell you, there, there was never a moment in my life when I don't think I was getting messages. I just wasn't paying attention. I would hear things at a heart level, I mean, really solid things. Like even the job where I was, where I wasn't happy, that last place in my career that I thought was I had arrived, I mean, I was a vice president of marketing, a big business. It was the pinnacle of my career. I should have been ecstatic if it were truthful. But I got a, I got a little message before I accepted the job that was telling me probably not the right thing to do, but I didn't listen. Mm-hmm. So I would ask people to start really, really paying attention to the things that are coming in. Messages come into us all the time, and sometimes we push them away because we don't want to hear them. We're too comfortable. We're too afraid. I was afraid to look at the unknown. I was too afraid. Mm -hmm. And I meet people today who are the same way, but I don't know, like, what would I do if I just quit my job? Well, I don't know. You get quiet enough, and a message comes in. And then you just unravel that message and see where it takes you. Nice. So now you're helping people live who they are. Um, How do you do that? Through your book? Um, I speak. I write. I do some regular publications in um, like Divine Caroline or Easing Articles. Um, I've got a best-selling book that I'm a co-author of with Greg Reed called Everything is Subject to Change. Oh, love Greg Reed. Ah, right on. Yeah, he's awesome. And then I've got my own book coming out later this year called The Happy to Be Me Handbook. 
and it's kind of a combination of journal meets um, handbook or manual for how to have a happy life. And I have a four-step process. The first step is wake up. So really come to terms with who you really are. I say magnificent essence. That's what the ME stands for. We're much more than our personality or our, our, our identity. We are really spiritual beings. And then the next step is to shake up. So shake up your world and get rid of the stuff that is not truthful, is not authentic, is not real about you, and really embrace other ways of being. And then make up, Rumi says, make up the story. And so we make up a new story of how we're going to be in our world. And then take up is the last step, and that's take up the reins and go live it. So that's choose it, commit to it, take action to bring it to life. All right on. And today you are healthy, happy, and wise. Yes. Um, you tell me blood pressure is normal. normal. Right on. For the first time in like 20 years. Yeah. I got a 120 over 80 reading. And the key here is I stopped taking my medication to my doctor's chagrin for a little while. I stopped taking my medication in October of last year. And so when I got my 120 over 80 reading a week ago, that was non-medicated. So I believe um, without a doubt that my heart is less constricted. I've let go of the emotional junk in my trunk. <laughs> I've really claimed more peace and I'm claiming to be it. Like I am acting in a way that is I am peace, love, joy, and freedom. And that's what I'm here to offer. Right, I want thank you so much. Thanks for being here at CEO Space. It's such a pleasure meeting you. you thank too. you. Thank you. Blessings, everyone. Namaste.